hello, hello, hello. How how is everyone doing today? Doing good. Good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk to you all about this uh, wonderful short film. I, I I I saw it back when Raya came out, and I just watched it again right before this interview. So I think that this is going to have the the word Oscar maybe next year on it. <laughs> Hey, you get to say that, not us. Yeah, yeah. we're not good. <laughs> so, uh, Zach, we're going to start with you. Obviously, it's it's a very unique exploration about being old and finding that inner spark. Where did this idea come from? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm not I'm not the age that's represented on screen. Um, but uh, the idea came, you know, years ago after I finished my last film, and I was just thinking about ideas for for future projects and. At the time, I was in my early 30s and starting to feel, you know, some of the aches and pains that go along with crossing that threshold and just kind of that realization of like, oh, I, I actually am getting older um, and and kind of wanting that younger version of myself back. Um, but then talking to my mom, who was in her 60s, and she was talking about when she grows up, all the things that she's going to do. And that just that wording really struck me as like, oh, wow, from her perspective, she's young. And from my perspective, I'm old. And how much it is just that matter of perspective. And that if I spent all of my time with that backwards perspective, then I'm going to miss what's happening in the present, um, which is something that, you know, my wife, my mom, all the, all, all the women in my life kind of are constantly reminding me of. And so it felt like a really honest uh, thematic premise to kind of build a story around. And so from there, just trying to figure out how to tell this, this fountain of youth story became the challenge. What's the difference going from stage to live action screen to animation screen? Yeah, well, um, honestly, it's, um, you know, th there is a difference, especially from stage to screen. Uh, that's really, um, you know, with stage, you're, you don't have the camera to tell where the audience to look. And that's where, you know, blocking and lighting comes into play. Um, and uh, obviously what, uh, who's dancing, cause you see everything, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but you know, with film, you get, you get to play with the camera, with lenses and all of the things. Um, and I think with this specific project, animate, now it being an animation project, it's even another level where, you know, to some degree, we, we get a little more flexibility because, um, uh, you know, the animators get to fill in the gaps that we can't humanly do, um, while most of it we could do. I think uh, choreography wise, it, it was just, um, you know, kind of uh, once, once Zach and Brad really just gave us all the tools, all the context, all the story things and the previs and all of the things, it was really just getting getting into to, to the work and doing what we do, which is tell story through movement, um, and understanding that this is for film um, is yeah where it all came together. I, I wanted to also follow that up. Did you both always know that you wanted to be uh, choreographers? I think so. We've been choreographing since what we were like fifteen. <laughs> <Think like, laughs> Very early on, just experimenting on our own. So I think it's always been in us. Uh, and we're just very, we like creating things. We like making things. And we've been doing that since we were kids. Yeah. Um, so uh, yes and no, that wasn't the plan technically. It, that kind of just happened. Um, but yeah, it's just part of who we are. <laughs> Tell me how you pitch something that has no dialogue. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I had a, a lot of visuals. I had a lot of reference as far as like the, the tone and the feel, the, the neon light and all of that as far as like, here's what it should feel like visually. I had a super cut of Keone and Mari actually, not knowing I would ever get to work with them um, because I didn't even know that they would pick this story. Um, but I had a, a super cut of Keone and Mari reference to kind of show like, if we do this idea of a world of dance I think they can do it or their style can do it because of the range by which they, they, can, they can emote. Um, and then I also had a playlist of songs um, in kind of the soul funk genre, kind of 60s, 70s music mixed with a lot of songs that are either referencing or trying to recreate that, that style of music today. And so that whole package together, plus, you know, kind of my personal story of, of, of getting older and 
and this draw to be younger, all of that kind of became my, my story. And so I had, I had a rough outline that I kind of pitched at the initial meeting that is like, not at all the movie that we made um, as far as plot is concerned. But from the beginning, it was always about this idea of this, this older gentleman who, you know, is focused on this part of his life that doesn't exist anymore and is missing the part of his life that does exist um, and gets to have what he wants for a moment only to realize that um, us again is not a physical one. It's an emotional one. And, and that that is the kind of the bonding agent between him and his wife. How did you come up with the idea for the rain? The rain actually came pretty quick or like early on as I was like, as I was thinking about, you know, I, I would, I think it'd be really cool to do a Fountain of Youth story where this older couple has a, has a single night. I always wanted it to be a single night for some reason uh, of, of being young again, just to kind of get that taste and to learn that lesson. And so as I was thinking about water, because I always wanted it to be water for the fountain thing. Um, and so pretty, pretty immediately it was like, oh, well, rain seems like the right mechanism. Cause I also felt like going, being young and out in the rain and dancing in the rain and playing in the rain is so, it's so youthful. It's so romantic and it's also temporary. And so it immediately raises the stakes of the film that, you know, this can't last forever. And so where is this going to go? Is kind of always in the back of your mind. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so great. And I love how it just it keeps popping up throughout and, and especially the, the final scene when they're on like the pier. Yeah. And, you know, she stops and he starts running and then, you know, they look back. I just, I, it, it's such a beautiful, beautiful little film. It really is. Thank you so much. I'm curious. My, my wife actually works with me doing a lot of the stuff that we do in this industry with running a critics organization and running a website. Um, what is it like for you to work together and what are each of your strengths and weaknesses? Well, you know what it's like. <laughs> um, it's, it ain't always easy. It ain't always easy, <laughs> but it's wonderful to share uh, a work life with your, with your partner. Um, you just know each other on such a different level. Um, and I... I think it makes your relationship and your ability to communicate. You, you don't have a choice but to, to sharpen <laughs> those tools in your life because you have to have conversations with each other, um, not only about your life, but also about your work. And you, um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, but it's wonderful. And it just deepens everything. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we try to, you know, set rules where we're like, all right, let's stop talking about work once dinner hits. But, you know, a couple <laughs> bites, we're like, hey, what about that idea of, you know, it, it's, it's a part of our lives. And we've sort of, you know, uh, just welcomed that uh, over time, you know, and I think it's definitely strengthened our marriage. It's made parts of our marriage more difficult, but getting over those humps, you know, it only sharpens you and, you know, iron sharpens iron kind of thing. And I think um, where strengths and weaknesses uh, lie, I think it's funny. I think we both have a, a sort of related to like, I have a director's personality and she has a writer's personality where it's sort of that, like I'm a little louder and, not, and she's a little more quiet, but where we cross in the middle is with story and obviously with choreography. Um, so now that we understand that, which we didn't understand in the beginning, it took a while to um, <laughs> it's a lot more easy in the, uh, in the office these days. So, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the big things that we've been talking a lot about within the industry, and I'm very curious to pick everyone's brain, uh, probably be the last question, is uh, representation and animation, right? We've, we've been talking about a lot in film lately. Um, we have, you know, more and more movies are coming out like uh, In the Heights and, and, and um, Soul last year. Very important that voices are being seen on screen. Um, for, can you each of you talk about a little bit about being in your line of work and what does it mean to have representation in that line? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can, I can definitely speak to, to, to the choices in us again. That was a choice that we made very, very early on from, from the pitch. Um, it was always an interracial couple. Um, I'm in an interracial couple. And, uh, and so I, I always wanted that to be represented on screen. 
Um, and then we also, you know, in, in starting to, to dig into the story, you know, we were also representing an older couple, which is not often represented on screen. And so when we were choosing, because obviously uh, the, the, the races that were selected are, is not this guy. Um, and so um, when we were making that decision, it was really about like, what is, what is the least represented? you know, and trying to normalize that kind of representation because this, the representation in this film is not what the story is about. And so the more, the more that, that film, that animation, that, that, that stage anyone, um, you know, can start normalizing that and seeing it as this is just a story about a guy who's struggling, who's struggling. The fact that he's Japanese American, you know, it, it needed to be done specifically and it needed to be done, um, you know, in a, in a way that was authentic to, to Japanese Americans, um, but it didn't have bearing on what he was going through emotionally. And so we definitely met with, you know, a lot of people to talk through on how to do that in the most authentic way with our diversity and inclusion team. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's just an American story um, that just happens to be, you know, a, an interracial couple. And I think those are honestly the best ones, to be honest with you. I love when I can just watch a movie and anyone can relate to it. And that's what makes it the best. Yeah, and that's, that was what was important to us in terms of representation. You know, obviously being Asian American and being dancers, we don't often see those things on screen. But it's, but, you know, it's one thing to see it on screen and to see it as a caricature and to see it as dance in the way you would think you, the typical way of seeing it or Asian American or uh, you know African American the way you think you would want to see them it, it doesn't have this the story um, yes it's diverse but that's not the the point of the story and I, I love that because I think that just uh, is I don't know that's what I, I, I would love to see on screen for seeing for my daughter to see things on screen that you know look like her but it doesn't have to be about her heritage if it is it's cool but also it doesn't have to be yeah, yeah. and that yeah. she can just have all these heroes and heroines that she can look to and they are all different and they're coming from different cultures and uh being a little when I grew up and I was a little girl and Mulan came out I can tell you <laughs> as a little mixed race Asian American girl I was like I'm allowed I'm can be a Disney princess and a Disney princess can be a warrior and be strong like there's so many things that you uh, so much messaging that you get, uh, and especially with like Disney and animation, like it's so important that uh, you know those decisions are thought about and made because it's uh, it's given to the world, and so many people love it, and uh, it means a lot to to people when they see themselves um, represented like that. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's all continue to fight to tell everyday stories about everyone, okay? Yeah. Thank you so very much.